So in the last part of the lecture, I, I'm going to talk about the integral test. Right, so um, the integral test can only be applied for series of positive terms. So if we have, um, well, a sequence of positive uh, terms and um, suppose that it comes from a fitting function that is continuous, positive and decreasing. Then the series, well, the series um, f of n, when n goes from, say, n capital to infinity, converges if and only if the integral from n to infinity of the function f of the yeah, f of x dx does, right? So it, it means that um, basically, usually the integral is something that we can compute because it's fairly straightforward to compute integrals. And if we don't know whether our series converges, then we can replace it with the integral. And then if the integral converges, then so does the series. If the integral diverges, then so does the series. So um, the... Kind of trick here is that well the, the, this is by the way an improper integral so which means the limit um as the upper bound of uh, as the upper limit of integration tends to infinity so that's the improper integral now um how we can apply this here so now notice that it is important that um our fitting function should be continuous positive and decreasing so otherwise it's it's not going to work uh, let me prove the integral test first. It, it's not very hard, actually. Uh, let, let me show you how, how, how it can be done. Um, so the, the first thing is that we are going to, to prove that the sum of the series is less than or equal than the integral from 1 to infinity of, um, um, of the function. So here, if the integral converges, if this integral is actually a finite number, like, I don't know, maybe i, and is a finite number, then what uh, it tells you is that partial sums of the series, so you, you don't even have to, you don't even need to consider infinite sums, you can just look at the partial sums, and all the partial sums are going to be smaller than that, that number, right? At the same time, the, these partial sums are going to be increasing because um, every next partial sum is obtained from the previous by adding a positive positive number. So you get an increasing sequence and it is bounded. So it, it has a finite limit, right? So if the integral converges, then the series also converges. On the other hand, um, we, we can look at it from a slightly different point of view. And, and here we see that um, Basically, um, our integral is also smaller than or equal than the same series only with the first term, right? So, and then it means that if the integral diverges, which means that, you know, um, finite pieces of the integral approach infinity. So if, if you look at any finite piece of the integral, so if these pieces approach infinity, then uh, finite partial sums are even bigger. So they will also approach infinity, right? So the, the series is also going to, diverge. All right. Uh, now it is important that, uh, so notice that, you know, for the, the, these pictures is important that the uh, function is decreasing. So because if the function is not decreasing, if the function looks like this, then the, the, these pictures are, are not going to, to work anymore. It's not going to be true. So you will get something like this, which is just, that doesn't make sense. That That's why, uh, in order for uh, the integral test to be applicable, uh, the, the function must be decreasing. And um, it doesn't have to be continuous, though, actually. I, I don't think it has to be continuous. But it needs to be at least decreasing. OK, um, use the integral test to, to determine the convergence of the series, right? So um, basically, the, the question is, so can we figure out whether the, the series converges or 
diverges. So to do it, we replace it with the integral. So instead of the, the series, we take the corresponding um, integral and it doesn't really matter what the limits of integration are. Because again, so convergence or divergence is um, an effect that happens at infinity. So if you change the, you know, the index of summation here or the lower limit over integration for the integral, it, it, it's not going to affect the answer. So um, we can replace the convergence or divergence of this series with the corresponding integral. So in order to, to do it, we need to check whether the, the function, so the function here is f of x is basically n becomes x, 1 plus x squared. Is the, this function decreasing? And it is true that the, this function is decreasing, right? So if, if x gets bigger, then x squared also gets bigger. 1 plus x squared gets bigger, so the reciprocal gets smaller. So it is decreasing. Um, is it con continuous? Yes, it is continuous. So which means that instead of looking um, at our series, we can um, take the integral from, say, 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, right? And the antiderivative of 1 plus x squared is inverse tangent um, x, and we've got to change, take the change from 1 to infinity. Well, what does it mean? It, it really means the, the, this change from 1 to infinity, it means the, the value of inverse tangent at infinity is not really a real value, it's the limit of inverse arc. So let me write it nicer. Arc tangent x as x goes to infinity, minus minus inverse tangent of one. And the limit of inverse tangent at infinity is, is what is pi over two. And this is pi over four. The important part is that it is, it is not infinite. It is a finite number. And since it, it, it means that the integral converges and since the integral converges, we conclude that the series also converges. So that's basically how it works, right? So positive continues decreasing. So this the same thing here. Um, and yeah, so the series converges. Now, it is important that the sum of the series, so notice that for the integral, usually we are able to, to actually compute it. Like in this case, we computed the integral and the integral is pi over four, but it doesn't mean that the sum of the series is also pi over four. So we can only conclude that the series converges. So the, the reason is because, you know, if you plot the series and the, the integral, so then the, this shaded area is always series. And, you know, in, the, in this picture, it is strictly bigger than the integral. So in, in this picture, it is strictly smaller than the improper integral. But in either case, it's, it's not the same thing. So we can only apply it to verify convergence or divergence, but we cannot use it to find the sum of the infinite series. Okay, um, now the probably the most important application of the integral test is the so-called P-series. So P-series is the sum of reciprocals of n raised to some power P. So here are a few examples. So in particular, if P is one, then we will get our familiar harmonic series, we, which we already know to diverge, right? So if P is a negative number like here, so then it just really means that we have a series of positive powers of N and uh, it of course is going to diverge too because simply because the limit uh, of A N is not zero, right? But what happens for other values of p, so for positive values of p um, that are not one, so like if p is three or if p is one half, so is the series going to converge or diverge? Intuitively, of course, uh, if p is smaller, then reciprocals of um, n to the raised to the power p becomes bigger. So you know if you and the, the bigger it is, the less likely that it is going to diverge. So basically the 
intuition here is that if P is small, then it is going to diverge. If P is large, then it is probably going to converge. And it is actually true. So the theorem says that if P is bigger than one, then it is going to converge. And if P is less than or equal to one, it is going to diverge. In particular, when P is exactly one, we will have the harmonic series, the familiar harmonic series. So this is actually another proof of the fact that the harmonic series diverges. All right, uh, this is not a very difficult theorem, so let me um, um, let me do it. Let, let, let me prove it. So uh, basically, first of all, so notice that if p is uh, bigger than or equal to, to than, than zero, then in that case, one over n to the power p is not going to approach zero. So by the limit test, we immediately conclude that the series diverges. So that's not even an interesting case. So the interesting case is Sorry, uh, if P is negative, if P is negative, of course, P is less than non-positive. So the interesting case is therefore going to be when P is strictly positive. So this is the interesting case. Uh, and in this case, we can consider the function one over X to the P. And uh, we will apply our integral test. So the integral from one to infinity dx converges if and only if let me write it like less than infinity so meaning that it is a finite number so which means it converges uh, if and only if the sum of the infinite series from one to um, to to infinity is well less than infinity which means it converges right now uh, how can we write this? So this is really, uh, we can just find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of one over x to the power p is going to be, um, well, what is it? So th this is really x to the power minus p, right? So the antiderivative is going to be um, x to the minus p plus one divided by, well, minus p plus one. And we should take the change from one to infinity, right? So this is really um, okay. Let me rewrite it a little bit different. So one minus p minus one x to the power basically one minus p. And I should take the change from one to infinity. So now at one is not interesting, it's not really interesting. So at one, we just have uh, x is one, and this is going to be one over p plus one. So this is the value of the, this whole thing when uh, x is, is one um, minus one over p minus one, the limit as x, well, as uh, x goes to infinity of one minus x raised to the power one minus p. Well, but what is one minus p really? So now this limit is going to be, well, if uh, one minus p is positive, then th this limit is going to be infinite. If one minus p is going to is zero, then th this limit is, uh, if one minus p is zero, it means that p is one. So th this is uh, x raised to the power, uh, th this is x raised to the power zero, which is just always one for any value of x, right? So in, in that case, the limit is one, but notice that if one minus p is zero, then we cannot divide by p minus one. So this method doesn't doesn't really work. So it doesn't work. Doesn't work. So let's um, postpone the case p equals one. Um, well, by a couple of minutes. But um, at, at the same time, if one minus p is negative, so then here we uh, we. Uh, x is a large number so we are raising it to a negative power which means that we are dividing by 
a large number. So the, the limit of the distance is going to be zero. Okay, so what we see here is um, basically if one minus P is positive, then the limit is infinite. So the series diverges. But what, um, what does it mean? So one minus P is positive. It means that one is bigger than P. So P is smaller than one. So P is smaller than one. The series diverges. And if one minus P is less than zero, it means that P is bigger than one. And in that case, the, since the limit exists, well, it is the, the, the limit of the distance is zero, but it doesn't matter. So, so, so the important thing is that it exists. So the series converges. So just as, as claimed. So the remaining case is when P equals one. This is the familiar harmonic series, but now I'm going to just give you a different proof of the fact that the harmonic series diverge. So the problem with this is that if P is one, then this antiderivative is, is just not going to work because if P is one, then our integral is the integral from one to infinity of one divided by X dx and in that case the antiderivative is the logarithm so this is the logarithm the change of the logarithm x from one to infinity uh, which is really the limit of long x as x goes to infinity minus along one and th this limit is infinite so what we get is infinity and the integral diverges and therefore the series also diverges okay so this this is a different proof of the fact that the harmonic series diverges but again it, it doesn't um really tell us what the value of the series is and in, in particular for your reference this is one of my um favorite equations in mathematics so the, the sum of, of the p series uh, with p equals to 2 is really pi square over 6 it's, it's kind of cool yeah you, you can try to, to google it up uh, so true true story so it's pi of pi square over 6 Okay, uh, so this is the rest of the proof printed on the slide that you can study later if you're interested. So, but the, the basically the, the same thing as I, I just explained, only probably, you know, with more details. So that's the end of the last part. And that's the end of the whole lecture about series. So the next lecture is also going to be on, on series.